I'm Dr. Robert R. Shaw, professor of thoracic surgery at Southwestern Medical School. Because of my position, I accepted the responsibility of taking care of Governor Connolly uh, following his injury. I want to say at the outset that the condition of the governor is quite satisfactory in view of the injury that he has sustained. He seemed to have been struck by just one bullet which entered the right posterior chest close to the shoulder blade and coursed downward along the chest wall taking out and fragmenting a portion of the fifth rib on the right. The bullet then emerged from the chest evidently struck his right wrist fracturing the lower portion of the right radius and then entered the left thigh where it was spent. The thigh wound is trivial. The fracture of the radius should heal without difficulty or without further disability. Our major problem was the sucking wound of the right chest wall because in making the wound of the chest the fragments of the fifth rib became what we refer to as secondary missiles and these caused a considerable amount of tissue damage in the point where the missile emerged from the chest when the wound had been enlarged in order to remove damaged tissue, the lung could be inspected. It was found that there was a tear in the middle lobe of the lung which had to be repaired. There was also a small hole in the lower lobe, undoubtedly due to a small rib fragment. This was of no consequence. The major problem was a matter of completely controlling all bleeding points, removing all damaged muscle and tissue, and then securing a tight closure of the chest wall so that the right lung could be re-expanded. The governor's condition was good during all of this. He was perfectly lucid before anesthesia was started. And from what we know about his injury and his condition at the present time, we have no reason to believe that he won't completely recover without significant disability of any sort. And uh, now reporters who are standing here have uh, asked for questions. I want to know how long he will be required to stay. He will be in the hospital. It will be determined more by the clearing of the bruise to the right lung, and I would estimate that this would be in the neighborhood of 10 to 14 days. This doesn't mean that this injury will be completely clear by this time, but at least we should have a good idea as to the trend of the clearing. The trend of the clearing, uh, whether it is clearing or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked uh, the governor, yes, a uh, reporter asked if the governor knew he was, the president was dead. He said they didn't. Uh, tell him. No. They're now asking, is he out of surgery and resting comfortably in his room? They are care of the compound fracture of the right radius. As soon as that fi is finished, he will be taken to the recovery room where he will be carefully watched until he has regained all of his vital signs. Now, his vital signs are good now, but we like to observe them for a period of time. This is a routine measure until blood pressure is stable, respirations are satisfactory, and until the governor is uh, fully recovered from the anesthesia. In other words, he's fully conscious, responding rationally to questions. They are asking now if a bullet was found uh, in his leg. The bullet is in the leg. It hasn't been removed. This is a 
very insignificant factor, though. It will be removed. Left eye. But there's no significant injury to the left eye. Before he goes to the recovery room. It was asked, when will it be removed? Then I ask him, will, uh, will he stay at this hospital? The doctor says it will be advisable. Has it been definitely determined one bullet? Uh, really a reconstruction of what must have happened, but assuming, of course, that we know that the government was in, governor was in a sitting position. We know that the wound of entrance is alongside the shoulder blade here, that the wound of exit was here. We speculate that his arm were, perhaps was about in this position and that it fractured his arm here and then went on with him sitting into his left thigh. This is a matter of trying to reconstruct the trajectory of the bullet. He was shot from above and he was in a sitting position. So we feel that this is all one bullet that... Uh, no, that's not. The question was asked, yes, did the lung collapse? Collapsed. However, don't stress that point. The lung can be easily re-expanded. It's like a balloon. You can let it down and blow it up again. What are the chances of complications for a man his age? The lung is now re-expanded. Mm -hmm. Was he given a large quantity of blood? Was he given a large quantity of blood? He had lost approximately 1,500 cc's of blood. We counted in units, 500 cc's to a unit, and this is what has been given back to him. How much is 1,500 cc's? and a half. I am in Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas at the bedside of Governor John Connolly, where he is recovering from his wounds. Governor Connolly, what are your recollections of those terrible moments when you and President Kennedy were shot? Martin, just before it occurred, of course, uh, we'd had a great morning in Fort Worth, a magnificent breakfast. Uh, we spoke in a slight drizzle. We made the trip to Dallas, uh, with huge throngs along the way. We got into downtown Dallas, there were tremendous crowd, real warmth, uh, real understanding, real appreciation. And Nellie and I saw it so vividly because we were riding in the car with them. Uh, we did not attempt to acknowledge the obvious ovation that they were getting because we, we knew it was for the Kennedys. Uh, the, the reception had been magnificent. Uh, the president had remarked on it, I saw it Miss Kennedy. As a matter of fact, I guess not 30 seconds. Uh, before the tragic incident occurred, that Nellie had turned to the president and said, Mr. President, uh, they can't make you believe now that uh, there are not some in Dallas who love you and appreciate you, can they? And he said, no, they sure can't. And then, and then we had just turned the corner. We heard a shot. I turned to my left. I was sitting in the jump seat. I turned to my left to look in the back seat. The president had slumped. Uh, he had said nothing. Almost simultaneously, as I turned, I was hit. And I knew I'd been hit badly. And uh, I said, I knew the president had been hit, and I said, my God, they're going to kill us all. And then there was a third shot, and the president was hit again. And we, we thought then very seriously. I had still regained consciousness, but the president had, been, had slumped in Ms. Kennedy's lap, and when he was hit the second time, she said, or, or the first time, I, it, it all happened in such a brief span, she said, uh, oh my God, they killed my husband, she said, Jack, Jack. And, uh, and then after the third shot, uh, the next thing that occurred, I was conscious, the Secret Service man, of course, the chauffeur had, they had pulled out of the line. They said, uh, get out of here on the radios. They said, get us to a hospital immediately. And so we pulled out, of course, and immediately as fast as we could go and got to the hospital. And it, it, uh, in the space of a, a few seconds, it's unbelievable what can happen. Martin, we went from great joy, anticipation, a wonderful crowd, wonderful throngs, to great tragedy.